Hey, it's Mr. Vibe, and we're going to talk about scientific thinking and processes today. So first, let's get into our key concept here, and that is to know that science is a way of thinking, questioning, and gathering evidence. We're going to talk about a couple of ways that we can do that. So like all of science biology, the science that we're looking into is a process of inquiry. You've got lots of things where you uh, conduct experiments, uh, get a hypothesis, gather materials, perform a procedure to uh, ultimately get a conclusion. So what we're going to look at is this little cycle today and look at the first step a little more closely, observing. So observing is the first step in scientific process. Uh, you're going to use your senses, which is your qualitative data, and you're going to use tools to gather information, which is your quantitative. Now the difference between qualitative and quantitative, qualitative is things like what color something is, uh, or you know, something you can see or that you can touch or anything like that. Um, quantitative is anything that has to do with numbers. So how long something is in centimeters or uh, how much something weighs in grams. So also when you observe, you're going to record data and you're going to uh, analyze it later. So next step we're going to go on to is forming your hypothesis. So when you form a hypothesis, you're basically looking at a question and you're trying to explain the observations that you see. So you come up with a question and you say, you know, I, I think that the sky is blue and then you want to come up with a way, uh, a, a reason as to why that is. The thing with the hypothesis is that it has to be specific and it has to be testable. So it can't be super vague and it has to be able to put into experimental form. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to test that hypothesis. So when you test the hypothesis, now that's basically when you're collecting data uh, in response to that question that you had and you're relating it all to the hypothesis here. So you're testing it. This is the actual experiment time. Okay, after you've done your experiment and tested your hypothesis, you're going to look at all the data that you gathered. You're going to analyze that data. So reporting the results of the experiment, and you're going to actually document the trends and compare it to the control groups. And we'll talk about what controls are in a little bit. So we're going to look at trends and, and look at the results of our data. After you analyze your data, you're going to evaluate your results. So this is your conclusion step. So you're going to look at your data and your conclusions and those are um, studied to determine whether or not you know, they are valid. So um, your data is going to either support your hypothesis or it's not going to support your hypothesis and you just have to uh, see what you get and how valid it really is. So let's talk about variables now. Um, these are uh, cause and effect relationships. So mostly you've heard about independent and dependent variables. The independent variable affects the dependent variable. So let's look at the two of these really closely. So first of all, the independent variable is the condition that is manipulated in an experiment. So usually you, the experimenter, are manipulating this variable. Uh, this is known as the cause in the cause and effect relationship. When you graph it, it is on the x-axis. Okay, this is different from the dependent variable. Uh, this is the factor that is measured in an experiment. So this is affected by the independent variable. So in the cause and effect relationship, the dependent variable is the effect and it is graphed on the y-axis. Now, these aren't variables, but these are important to keep in mind. Constants are anything that are kept exactly the same when you run your experiment, so constant temperature when you're doing something with plant growth or something like that. There's also something known as a control group. Um, this is a standard of comparison, so this control group would be treated exactly the same as all the uh, things in your experimental group, except for the independent variable. You hold that independent variable uh, constant for this control group. And when you graph variables, last thing we're looking at here, uh, you can see here, um, so this graph here says it compares the effects of the same dosage of two different medications on blood pressure. So we're looking at the same dose, two different medicines, and how, what effect they have on blood pressure. The independent variable, which is the dosage on the x-axis down there, stayed the same and the blood pressure was the dependent variable that's on the y-axis. So you can kind of see how this uh, would look.